Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Most forced fumbles in NFL history. Defensive end, defensive end, the end, the end, the end, the end. Cornerback? Bingo! I got action. Charles Peanut Tillman made two Super Bowls, multiple Pro Bowls, and he's one of the greatest Chicago Bears of all time. But when it comes to one specific category, dude stands alone at the top of the mountain. Charles Peanut Tillman has more career force fumbles than any defensive back in NFL history. He perfected what was coined as the peanut punch, and he's inspired many DBs in the game today. Cats back then used to know it was coming, but somehow it still would catch them all off guard. But while you may have been able to see a signature move coming, Charles's career choice after retiring from the NFL caught pretty much everybody off guard. But I guess if you can lock up some of the NFL's greatest wide receivers, you might as well go ahead and lock up foreign counterintelligence as well. Two times a year for seven seasons, he battled with one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play the game. It's freaking Megatron, so Peanut obviously didn't win every single matchup. But between 2008 and 2012, Peanut Tillman more often than not managed to shine brightest while lining up across from one of the game's biggest stars. This is what happened to Peanut Tillman, a forgotten player who helped change the game. Yo, if y'all enjoyed the videos, man, don't forget to subscribe for a brand new one every single week, share the channel so we can continue to grow, and check out the merch store right underneath the video. But other than that, y'all already know what time it is, bros. Cue the way. Yeah, no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get all right, real quick before we jump in, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Now, if you've been around the channel for any length of time, you know I've been singing the praises of the Lawnmower 3.0 for quite a while now. But with feedback from millions of fans across the globe, Manscaped is taking it a step further with the Lawnmower 4.0. As the name suggests, the Lawnmower 4.0 is Manscaped's fourth generation trimmer. The skin safe tech has been improved to further protect against any nicks or cuts, and now the blades can be easily replaced, adding even more longevity to the product. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower, making it easy to add this into your routine. It's also got a wireless charging system that works incredibly intuitively as the lights indicate the charge level on the front and once this thing is fully charged it'll run for a full 90 minutes giving you phenomenal battery life the long battery life also makes this thing ideal for travel and now that they added the new travel lock feature you ain't gotta worry about this mug buzzing in your suitcase or draining your battery overall i'm digging the new design they kept features like the led light for added precision and they make the skin safe tech even better couple that with the brand new features they added and you make a good product even better and with a tool like this you can feel confident in any situation hassle free and pain free so click the link down below and get 20 percent off plus free international shipping at manscaped.com shout out to manscaped once again for sponsoring the video without further ado let's get it before he became one of the greatest chicago bears of all time charles tillman was just a small chicago kid with a peanut head his aunt started calling him peanut way back then and to Charles's dismay, the name actually stuck. His dad was in the military, so they traveled around quite a lot when Charles was a kid. This forced Peanut Tillman into constant adaptation. Between kindergarten and 12th grade, this man attended 11 different schools, and that's including places like Germany and Europe. Bro, to a cat like me, this seems intense, but Charles adapted to it pretty well, and to him, it seemed normal. So at one point when he was in high school, his nickname actually got out, but it actually didn't land the way he thought it would. He thought he would be ridiculed and it would just bring more attention to his oddly shaped head, right? Turns out at least a couple of the girls was digging it, so, you know, dude fully embraced it after that. On the football field, dude was exactly what you'd expect tough, scrappy, and full speed. After moving around what seemed like every other week, Charles did his final year of high school in Texas. That coach helped him get recruited by ULL, aka the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. They actually didn't make it out until football season was over. But what they saw from Peanut Tillman on the basketball court, coupled with this film, that was enough. They offered him a full scholarship to play football. Charles had primarily played wide receiver in high school, but a position change to corner was a perfect fit. Despite changing positions, 
Sensations, dude started from day one and never relented that left corner spot for the next four years. Future NFL corner Ike Taylor actually played there with him for a couple of years, but he started out as a running back. In 2002, the two future NFL DBs were the starting corners for the Raging Cajuns, a scary proposition on paper that never really translated to wins, but it did launch two pretty amazing NFL careers. On draft night, when he got the call from the Bears saying that they were going to be picking him, owner was like, congratulations, you're a Chicago Bear. But this man was so shook, he just stood there holding the phone like he couldn't get no words out. Mercifully, they eventually just announced the pick on TV, and Charles's house filled with family and friends just erupted in celebration. The once undersized Peanut Tillman had grown into a 6'1", 207-pounder who still played like he had a small man complex. Hyper aggressive and always full speed. Peanut didn't start the first couple games of the season, but dude was so good they couldn't keep him off the field for long. Despite not being a day one starter, dude recorded 83 tackles, a sack, two forced fumbles, and four interceptions as a rookie. In year two, he dealt with injuries, but bounced back in his third season, outdoing every single statistic from his rookie year. Really an amazing accomplishment. A few years later, he helped get the Bears to the Super Bowl. In Super Bowl 41, Peanut Tillman forced a fumble, recovered a fumble, and had 11 tackles to go with it. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough as the Bears failed to Peyton Manning's coat. It was heartbreaking, I'm sure, but nothing compared to the real life situation Charles would have to deal with. One year earlier in 2005, it was brought to Charles' attention that there was an attendance problem in Chicago public schools, so he created a foundation called Cornerstone to help out with the kids in the area. Cornerstone continued to run for several years until the mission changed a few years in when Charles got heartbreaking news regarding his own daughter. Charles's daughter Tiana was only three months old when she was diagnosed with a fatal heart disease. One day when Charles was at practice with the Bears, his coach came over and had a somber look on his face. He told Charles that his daughter had been taken to the hospital and Charles immediately rushed there to be by her side. When he got there, he stayed as strong as possible in order to support his wife. But when the doctor gave him the news that it was a possibility that little Tiana may not make it through the night, Charles reacted like any father would. He broke down. Later speaking on the incident, Charles said he never felt more helpless in his life. He was successful, he had put on size, he had money, but none of it mattered. There was almost nothing he could do but try to stay as strong as possible in supporting his daughter and his wife. And while they said it was a chance she may not make it through that first night, little Tiana not only fought through that, but she fought for the next several months while the hospitals finally found a good heart for her. And thankfully, this one has a happy ending as she was able to successfully get the transplant surgery and grow up pretty much just like a regular kid. When Charles first got to the NFL, his teammates called him by his last name, which is a common thing on the football team when guys first meet. But it didn't take long before all of his teammates and coaches started calling him Peanut. And he says the first time he heard the announcer refer to him as Peanut Tillman during the game, he knew he had made it. Dude was the definition of an impact player. Like many corners, he did it by creating turnovers. And while yes, he caught his share of interceptions, the majority of those turnovers came from forced fumbles. Like we discussed in the intro, he developed a technique that would later become known as the peanut punch, where he literally punches the ball out of the ball carrier's hands. This is something we see pretty commonly today, but back then it was really just Peanut Tillman successfully using this technique. In 2012, things got ridiculous as he had 10 forced fumbles in a single season. Still tied for the NFL record, by the way. Hell, he once had four in a single game. As we alluded to in the intro, Peanut Tillman battled time and time again versus Megatron. They developed a real on-field rival. Now Megatron is Megatron, so he was one of the few players where Charles' signature Peanut Punch just wasn't very effective. Still, he always made Megatron work, and while I wouldn't say he shut him down, he did the best thing you can do versus a true superstar like Calvin Johnson. You basically just have to make them super inefficient. In basketball, they'd say turn him into a volume shooter. Cat dropping 25 points on 25 shots usually doesn't lead to wins. In 2011, Peanut Tillman held Megatron to just seven receptions on 19 targets, an inefficient 81 yards, and not a single trip to the end zone. In that game, Peanut Tillman had three deflections and a pick six. Yeah, he balled out. Not to mention the times the coverage was so tight that even Matt Stafford wouldn't throw it up to Megatron. But 
between 2008 and 2012, we're talking four seasons with two matchups per year. So in eight matchups, Peanut Tillman allowed Megatron one single touchdown reception and only two receptions over 20 yards. He picked off passes thrown to Megatron three different times in those eight matchups. But slowing down Calvin Johnson, even if it's just a little bit, has a major price. And Peanut Tillman actually ruptured his tricep once while jamming a Hall of Fame receiver. Megatron also transformed my dude's pinky finger. It's really not supposed to do this. But through all of those battles that they had, the two juggernauts gained an immense amount of respect for each other. Fittingly, I guess, the two combatants both decided to hang it up in 2015. And while we know Megatron retired in large part because of injuries, that's actually the same thing that ran Peanut Tillman out of the game. Unfortunately, the tricep he ruptured versus Megatron became a recurring issue, eventually causing Chicago to push one of the greatest bears ever out of the door. He played one more year with the Panthers but couldn't stay healthy and eventually ended up tearing his ACL, effectively ending a 13-year career. Charles Peanut Tillman finished his career with 44 forced fumbles, making him sixth all-time in that category. But amongst defensive backs, he's numero uno, and by a pretty decent margin at that. Brian Dawkins of physical box safety comes in second with 36, and the great Charles Woodson is there as well with 33. But what Peanut Tillman brought to the game was one of a kind. Like I alluded to before, forced fumbles weren't the only way he created turnovers. And I know this gotta hurt to this day because he retired just two interceptions short of hitting a crazy 40-40 milestone that would've saw him have 40 picks and 40 forced fumbles. Where was a guy like Nathan Peterman doing Peanut's final couple of seasons? When Peanut Tillman got his hands on the ball, he could easily take it the other way, scoring nine defensive touchdowns in his career. As amazing as his NFL career has been, Peanut Tillman's post-NFL career has turned just as many heads. He's continued his charitable work, and that includes training for months to roll across Lake Michigan in order to bring awareness to childhood illnesses similar to the one that his daughter had to deal with. It was a grueling two-man trip and they had to row for like 20 straight hours extremely difficult task but he decided to do it and he made it and while rowing across lake michigan is a pretty cool thing to say you did after retiring from the nfl his next move was just his next move was different like in in every sense of the word According to the Chicago Tribune, in 2017, Charles Peanut Tillman entered a two-year probational period with the FBI. Usually the only time it's publicized that somebody's working for the FBI is when it's like a convicted criminal trying to like cut time off of their sentence. Basically like all of the agents Sam Hurd ended up accidentally working with. Listen, it's the FBI, so it's not like it's a whole detailed list of information on this. But if you've been following the story, you know, Charles Tillman has always been able to accomplish whatever he puts his mind to. First, he had to go through a rigorous training academy which lasted 20 weeks. Then there's a two-year probationary period that you have to go through before you can get out onto the field. And if everything is still on the up and up, he should have recently finished that two-year probationary period or be right at the end of it. So Charles Peanut Tillman, a former NFL corner, one of the greatest Chicago Bears of all time, is now an FBI agent. And again, this move caught a ton of people off guard, but it's actually not too crazy when you just look at his history. Like I said at the beginning, his dad was a sergeant in the US Army. He traveled a lot as a kid and saw things including other countries. So today he's able to fit in with different crowds and easily adapt to different situations. During his time in college, he earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. And during his time in the NFL, he trained with law enforcement officers during most of his off season. So given all of that, it's not a complete shock that he would go into law enforcement and just given like how high a level he's been able to do everything at, of course he's gonna shoot for the top FBI. I'm 5-0 by the way, just so y'all know. I'm 5-0. We've seen retired NFL players do everything from writing scripts, launching businesses, to becoming an FBI agent. This is beautiful, and I'll tell you why. The way I see it is like this. If purpose is life's driving force, we should all take solace in the fact that no matter what you accomplish on this earth, there's always, always more to do.
Thank you.